The purpose of this video is to show you the workflow for customizing your Metro Publisher site using CSS and to demonstrate a couple of things you can do in order to get your creative juices flowing. But in order to really make use of this feature, you need to already know the basics of CSS, which is a web standard for visually styling HTML page elements. For more information about how Metro Publisher's page templates are structured and how to design your site, look into the support site under the design section. There you'll find additional help docs and wireframes. To get started, as a pro user, you have some additional features that allow you to inject CSS, manage the images of your design, and add some JavaScript into the page templates. When you log in as an admin and click the design tab, the first screen you'll come to is the theme editor. Here you can select a theme and get started on getting your design set up. Then you have this images section where you can manage the images for your design. You should only put images that you'll be using uh, in your design here. There is a completely different section of your work site for where you manage your images of your content. Here's just where you deal with aspects of your site's visual design. Now the next tab is the CSS. This video is primarily about that, so I'll skip it now and explain it to you in more detail momentarily. Then there's the JavaScript. Here you can insert your own JavaScript into the header and footer. This is an advanced feature and you need to be very careful when you use it. You can easily blow up your site by pasting in JavaScript that's incorrect or has conflicts with existing JavaScript in your page templates. And the last tab allows you to archive your design or upload a previously archived version of your design. So let's get into some detail about the CSS to create a distinctive visual look for your website. The workflow has two parts. The first is to select the theme um, to get you started. Then once you've made the initial selection for a theme, colors and fonts and such, you switch to the CSS editor to make further refinements. Um, to learn more about using the theme gallery, watch the video within that section. So in this sample, I've done some basic changes to one of the existing themes. I've added my logo, I've picked a color palette and made some font choices. But I wanna do a lot more than that. I wanna turn this site here into this one. I wanna strip the, cool, the color down and I wanna make everything simpler allow more white space, and feature larger images. And all of this can be done with CSS. In Metro Publisher, there are two layers of CSS. The first layer, which we call the base CSS, is what defines everything you see on the page based on the selections you made in the theme editor. The second layer is the screen CSS file, which loads after the base CSS and can add to or override whatever is in the base CSS. This is the file you have access to and can edit. And I'll repeat here uh, what I just said. The screen CSS file is the main CSS file that you'll be working on. That is where you do all of your CSS changes. So let's do an example. My main navigation is a dark gray color based on the theme and the color palette I selected. But let's say I, that I just wanted that element to be red instead of gray. I would change that in the screen.css file. But how do I know what to target in order to change the background color of the navigation to red? That's where this brilliant little application called Firebug comes in. So tip number one is that I encourage you to do all your CSS edits in Firefox using Firebug, okay? So let's go back to the navigation background color. We're gonna use Firebug to find the element we want to change. Which brings me quickly to tip number two. Um, use the preview to check page templates and check your changes. There are a variety of reasons for this. One is that your life site is cached and um, some of the CSS changes won't take effect immediately, which can be frustrating. So the best way to work, therefore, is to use the preview. When you're satisfied with your changes, publish them all live at the same time. So to continue, click on the preview button below and a new tab will open. On this preview page, open Firebug and find the element that you want to change. I want to make the gray background on the navigation red, so I need to find the element to see how the CSS is written. HTML and CSS can be written in a variety of ways. If you click around, you'll see that in this case, the main navigation is an unordered list with a class called uh, main nav. On the right here, you can see the CSS that defines the styling. So where there is a gray color, let's change it to red. Um, you can see now that the navigation is red. So you continue to play around with it until it looks the way you want it. Then you need to copy your changes and um, add the change to the screen.css file. Now this brings me to tip number three. Basically, you wanna add as little code as possible. You're overriding the base CSS, so you don't have to have all this redundant code, and you wanna avoid it as much as possible. So for example, the only change I made in this, per this particular example was to change the background color for the list. In this case, I will only copy that declaration that defines the color of the background. 
In Firebug, you can do that by clicking on this link here, then copy the whole declaration block. Now go to the screen.css file and paste it in. Then just delete the parts that you didn't change like this. Okay, now hit save. Then go back to your preview and refresh the page. And there, the background of the navigation is now red. So this is just a sample of the workflow you would use. In reality, you likely would want to do much more. So I'm going to make some bigger changes as an example. Now let's start again with a navigation using the same process. I'm going to do several things. I'm going to make the background white. I'm going to add some borders at the top and the bottom. And I'm going to make the text center aligned in uppercase. Okay, but now I can't see the text because the links were white. Now I'm going to change those. So I need to find the link color. So I'll find that element that defines the color and I'll change it to this gray color that I want. Now this is starting to look close. So I'm going to copy these parts over to the screen.css file. And then I'll preview it. And you continue like this until the site is looking how you want it. So for example, I want to center the logo. So I look around, there's the logo. Now I'll change it so it's centered. And then I'll copy that back over to the screen.css file. Save, preview, and again, you can see how your changes have affected um, the, uh, the page layout. Now the last thing I should mention is that you always need to check your changes for mobile devices. Metro Publisher uses media queries to switch out the CSS depending on the screen size your user is on. I suggest you look through the support site for guides explaining how media queries work to ensure your CSS changes remain compatible with responsive design. Here on the preview page, you have various options to view uh, mobile devices, and these are a sampling of common current screen sizes. Use these preview options to check your work and help ensure that your CSS changes will work nicely on mobile.